yesterday the draft lottery happened so we're kind of recording this on tuesday the monday was the draft lottery and it sparked a lot of controversy people saying as much as is the draft lottery fair and so in the nfl if you're the worst team you get the first pick and that's not how the nba works you have percentages of you put your name your balls in a little thing you spin them and then one comes out um and so the Atlanta Hawks were awarded the first pick in the draft. It was Atlanta Hawks one, Wizards two, Rockets three, Spurs four, Pistons five, Hornets six, Portland seven, Spurs eight, Memphis nine, Jazz 10, 11, Bulls 12, OKC, which is crazy because they're in the playoffs, 13 Kings, 14 Blazers. And this sparked a lot of controversy because the Atlanta Hawks, who were in the play in game, got the first seed. And some people are saying that it's not fair that they jumped up to number one. I definitely don't think it's fair that they jumped up to number one. Like in terms of like, is it, well, is it fair is a strong word. Is it unfortunate that they got up all the way at one for other teams? Like this, uh, like people were talking about the Pistons falling out. Yeah, it's unfortunate. It's unlucky. But I also think it's really great for the sport. Number one, it decreases the value of tanking. So if you're the Pistons, this is, and you were trying to tank, which the Pistons weren't trying to tank, they're just bad. But if you were trying to tank, then this is incentive enough not to do it because you fall out. And then also, too, it gives other teams an opportunity to get a little bit lucky and feel like they hit a break. For example, the Hawks, they're kind of knocking on the door to making the playoffs. I mean, obviously, they were in the play in game, so they were kind of close. Um, but they got guys, Trey Young, Clint Capella, Nick Okungwu, um, DeAndre Hunter. They've had guys in the past, Kevin Herter, um, Jalen Johnson, they drafted, who's been okay for them this year. Like they kind of are knocking on the door and you feel like they need one more player, one more reason to keep developing. And maybe they can get in the playoffs one more, two years down the line, be competing. And this is a great opportunity for them just to kind of make, first of all, make the Eastern conference better because they're going to be another contending team. And for the playoffs, that's just going to make the conference deeper. And then two, just for the fan base to get excited and so for them, I'm like, you get the pick of the draft. Now, this draft isn't good, but you get the number one player you want in the draft. I would not advise them to just take the best overall available. Take the player you want, the player that you think is going to fit with your team, and then develop the team. You can do so much now. You could trade... Um, crap, I forget his name. Um, you can trade DeJounte Murray if you want to get picks for him. You can keep him and run DeJounte and Trey and this new guy who I hope is a forward, and then keep your center rotation how it is and suddenly you've got something there you got to one more two years you can trade um Dejounte, like i said get players back run with trey and you can just do a lot more exciting stuff with this so i think it's great because all of a sudden the hawks have a lot of reason to be excited about their future where before it was kind of like is trey gonna leave are we gonna trade Dejounte? are we just gonna blow it up and suck well you don't need to blow it up anymore because you just got the number one pick which is what you were going to probably blow it up for next year so i love it but people this is what I really wanted to rant about, which is why it's okay that Peter's not here, is people are saying that they feel bad for the Pistons. And I don't understand how somebody can sit here and say they feel bad for the Detroit Pistons. So let's do a history lesson. The Pistons, I'm going to go through the Pistons draft picks since 2010 and let you know if I think they deserve to have a high pick. In 2010, they drafted Greg Monroe, number eight overall. Greg Monroe was cool. He was never at number eight number never like a top guy not a guy that's going to bring you a championship or make you lead in the playoffs in 2011 they had the seventh overall pick they drafted brandon knight that was a complete bust in 2012 they had the ninth pick and they drafted andre drummond drummond was cool and he was really good for the franchise he led them to multiple like playoff appearances not bad at all not a star either notably at 39 that year they draft chris middleton who now just won a championship as a number two option on the bucks in 2021 so they didn't like they drafted a good guy, didn't develop him, went to a different team. 2000, well, they did draft, they, they traded him away, but like the same thing. 2013, at the number eight overall pick, they drafted Contavious Caldwell Pope. Um, obviously, he's been a great rotation player for the Lakers when they won in 2020. For the Nuggets, they won last year and for the Nuggets again this year. But he's not a number eight overall guy and he never, didn't really become like you traded him away. 2015, they don't have a pick in 2014. 2015, they draft Stanley Johnson, number eight overall. He's just been a role player. 2016, you have the six, 18th pick. It comes a little bit higher water, but you draft Henry Ellison. Um, I liked the pick at the time, but it obviously didn't pan out. 2017, you draft Luke Kennard, number 12 overall. Not been a good pick at all. In 2019, you don't have a pick in 2018. In 2019, you draft Seku, Seku uh, Dumboya. is from France at 15 overall. I love Seku coming out, and I don't blame him for making the pick, but it didn't work out at all. Seku's not even in the league anymore. 
2020, this is a little bit more recent history. You draft Killian Hayes, number seven overall. So far, Killian Hayes has been a fine player, not a great player, not a player that's making a difference. 2021, you draft Cade. I think Cade's been pretty good. He played 12 games last two seasons ago. Um, last season, he was okay. The team was bad. Um, his rookie year, he was good. You need to wait more time on him, but he hasn't been like the no, like the number one overall pick that you say, yep, this guy's got it. He's going to make a difference because he's not as good as Paolo is. He's not as good as Wemby is already. Um, and so because for that reason, you don't feel he's made or Anthony Edwards, who was drafted a year after him. So he hasn't been that guy. And because of that, you start questioning the pick a little bit like you got to draft this guy number one overall. 2022, you draft Jaden Ivy five overall. Again, he's been cool. He was a bigger name in like summer league and comes in and kind of gets buried in the roster a little bit. And you're like, oh, what the hell happened to JV, Jaden Ivey? And in 2023, they drafted a Sir Thompson, number five. He had a decent rookie year. We'll have to wait and see. He's just, he's just a rookie. Um, but the reason I go through all of this is, they, again, they never had like a, besides Cade, they never had like a lot of one, two, three picks. So I can understand from that perspective why you say, damn, the Detroit Pistons missed out. But it's not as if they haven't had opportunities. They had... One, two, three, overall eight picks. In the last 10 years, they have three number eight overalls, two number sevens, two fives, 12, 15, 18, and the first overall pick. Like It is not as if they haven't had an opportunity to draft guys. Tyrese Maxey was drafted at 22 for the Sixers, I think, or 17. Um, Steph Curry, a little bit later of a a pick in the first round. Um, Paul George, a little bit later of a pick in the first round, like, and I don't expect you to hit on every single pick you make, but they really missed on a ton of players. And I, I can't go through each draft and see which guys they could have drafted. And I don't think I don't like playing that version of history. But fact of the matter is you've whiffed on so many draft picks. And because you've whiffed on the draft picks, I don't feel bad that you didn't get the number one overall pick. Because if you kept, kept making great draft picks, I would say, oh, man, they I knew at number one they were going to draft a star and they just missed out on the opportunity. But you clearly haven't been able to develop players or don't know how to draft players. And if you don't know how to do that, I don't want to see you make a draft pick then. I'd rather the Hawks go and draft the number one overall player they feel. Let's say it's Alex Sar. Go draft him and make him a stud to pair with Trey Young. I'm not confident that the guy the Pistons drafted is going to be a stud. I think he's just going to get buried on the roster and suck. So I don't think the Pistons deserve it. They have talent. They have Cade Cunningham. They have Jaden Ivey. They have a Sir Thompson. Those are the first, fifth, and fifth picks in the last three drafts. Go out and do something with the picks. It's not as if you don't have talent. Also, they've been able to pick guys up like James White, Johnson, uh, Jaden Durant, like these players. Like they they have high pick, high talent guys on the roster. Go out and do something with it. We talked about this all when the losing streak was happening. The Pistons weren't a great team, but they have talent on their roster. There's no reason they should be this bad. Oh, I've, Killian Hayes, seven one five five. Those are the last picks they had in the four drafts. And they're a bottom feeder team. Like I don't feel sorry for you at that point. I'm like much more happy that Atlanta Hawks, who've been having late round draft picks, get to have the opportunity to draft high for once and like change their franchise around a little bit. So that's why I don't feel bad for the Pistons at all. 